Today is the 30th day of August 2020 in Mashaba, Abaco, Bahamas, two days before the anniversary of Hurricane Dorian. And it's early morning, day after Sabbath or Sunday, beautiful day in Abaco. And I'm here at the government complex where I met a young man that worked hard tirelessly to try to keep this whole complex under control. One man, I'm gonna just tell you his story, which is a part of my story. After Hurricane Dorian, you had two to 3,000 people run into this building for shelter, had no other shelter. Hmm. I tell you about leadership. The chief counselor, he locked his family in the uh, local government office. Nobody else could go in there. He deemed it his and his own. That's where the selfishness started immediately after Hurricane Dorian by our leader, the chief counselor, three-time chief counselor, that dared anybody else to come in that building and we have been so selfish since that. Um, but this building, the government contracted people to come down and to clean it. But after they did the cleaning, the same one man had to reclean it. Didn't do a good job, but they got the money and gone. Then we had the immigration department that collected 100 Haitians out of the church. They found out that 70 of them had some kind of status. 30 of them were totally illegal. The brave soldiers after doing that intense investigation let all the Haitians go. Again, this young man from Kopistan, Stephen Bono, had to clean the building all by himself, facing COVID-19 because there was 100 people there and COVID-19 just hit, so we didn't know who had it from who didn't have it, but the government let everybody go back into the elements. But my thing with Steven, as I just knew him since he started to work, I, I knew the rest of the Boodle Boys, but I didn't know Steven. And I see him work hard every day, seven days a week, and you imagine that uh, every time it's time for his, him to get his paycheck, he is forgotten. I told him this week, I said, Stephen, catch yourself, brother. Get some advice, because they all call me for advice. Don't mind, uh, they don't like the way I speak, but when they need good advice, sound advice, they call Kai. I said, Stephen, you're a mechanic, you're a plumber, you're a carpenter, you and you alone, one person have this building up and running. Man, leave this, this place and don't even look back. You could get a job anyway. You're multi-talented. You're more talented than I am. I'm no carpenter. I'm no plumber. I'm no electrician. And this big building, he's keeping up and running all these years. And guess what Darren Henfield did? Darren Henfield, hired somebody to manage Stephen Boodle that doesn't know a crescent from a Philip. Got a trailer for the manager, but the man who was on the job, doing the job, they ain't got no trailer for him. He has to find somewhere in order to survive. And he can't never get his pay. You imagine you work tirelessly seven days a week. The other day when the hurricane was coming, um, Stephen had to buckle up and stay in one of the rooms and he had to be there around the clock to keep the water going. I wonder now, the trailers and the other building that needs water, he's the only one that knows the system. Who are you gonna call to make sure that people in the trailer on a Sunday gets water? I advise him, I said, Stephen, brother, shut your phone off, don't answer them. And if you're coming back, don't be no fool. Make sure that Brenzel rolled. Brenzel is my friend, but Brenzel don't know nothing but being a minister. It's his second um, opportunity to be a minister. 
and Brent still don't even know what the word minister means. He don't know how to manage. He don't know how to run his ministry. Don't never come back for the same pay. If they need you, come back for three times the pay. I wouldn't come back for the same salary. A no matter of fact, advice don't come back at all. Let the manager that went on the call and treasure key and proclaim Darren Henfield a demigod. And you'll be surprised to know what he's getting for not showing up to work every day. Any little trailer? Ask him when last he did any managing in this building. And I just want to let the world know what we have as a member of parliament in Darren Henfield and a prime minister, a doctor, gynecologist, time prime minister. Every country, there is a city center. In Abaco, it happened to be the government complex in Marshaba. You imagine one year after Hurricane Dorian, over 3,000 people went to this building, this complex for shelter. One year later, the prime minister office is one of the main office in this building. And to date, one year later, it still have black mold in it. The government of the Bahamas and my member of parliament there in Henfield is forcing their workers to come into a building that has no air condition, it's leaking, and it has black mold in it that could cause all types of ailment. To date, one year later, we are doing like the Negroes of old when you couldn't go downtown Bay Street to get in a hotel. You had to go in the back door to go in the Savoy Theater. If you're a Negro of my pigmentation, you had to go in the back door. Only thing has changed under this prime minister is that black and whites have to go through the back door in the main building in the city center one year after a devastating hurricane, the Prime Minister's office is still having you to go through the back door. Right here, you can't even see the, the name government complex. That's what they think about Abaco and Abaconians. Uh, the name, they clean it all the time. You can't see it. I did a video here the other day. Over here, this paper board been here for a week. Same video. It's still there, but you have foreigners that comes into this building. You can't even see the name Bahamas government. The Bahamas government, you can't even see in the Bahamas. You can't even see the name <laughs> on both sides that says the Bahamas government. You can't see the government sign at all. And they say they're ready for government. Look at this building right here. This is the essence, what I was talking about. Everybody comes to the complex uh, from all over. And this was happening right immediately after hurricane. You had diplomats, uh, you had people from the UN. You had people from the UN, and I hope that he's watching now. From the UN man came here and went upstairs to the prime minister's office. He had to go to the back door, all the American dignitaries that came to try to help one year later you still go to the back door like the Negroes of old this is Sunday the 30th day of August 2020 and we're still going to the back door and the air condition still not working in this huge complex and you have all of those trailers over there still all trailer up can't fix the prime minister's office can be fixed one year later this shows you how far we've gone and how far we haven't gone one year later you imagine Royal Bank the biggest bank in the Bahamas is still on a slab all the money and the power money is power and the people of Abaco have to come and sit here while Royal Bank is on a slab in the front of the Prime Minister's office. You imagine if you get COVID-19 in here, 
This is where you have to be for Royal Bank every day. They have a little shade in the front and the back here. But the majority of the people, when you're coming through this building, uh, they go through this door here where there's no shade and you have to stand here. And these people don't have the decency to put a shade over the place for their workers. And not only the workers, the, the, the people that come through this building. And I see people going there every time. I don't know who, who, who's supposed to say whether or not you go in there, but they go in there without mask. I see people go in there without mask all the time, and it's a small space, but you're out in the elements one year later. All the money, all the power that Royal Bank possess in this country, they haven't had a building up and running. Shame, shame on them. Commonwealth Bank, way ahead of them. They should be shut down for treating behemoths the way they're treating them in the Bahamas. I stopped banking with Royal Bank when the guy said that behemoths are stupid, the overall manager Royal Bank, he said that behemoths were stupid. When he said that, close account, finish with that. Now this is where uh, they're gonna have a problem right here because only Stephen Boodle could manage this water system right here. Is the water system here for the whole complex. Um, you don't wanna pay the guy um, but he's the only one that can manage the, the water system. Here, yeah. one year later, look at this. One year later, we're still, these are the government workers. There's no plan to get them out of here. Zero plan, and look how many, if, if there's a storm coming, we got two hurricanes on the way to Abaco. Where are these people supposed to go? Two hurricanes at the government complex. <laughs> It's gonna be a game changer. All of this. One year later, we're still crawling and creeping. It's one of these Kai Care early video. One year later, we still don't have any management. Nothing is protocol. The government workers are still in a trailer and two hurricanes is on the way. Where are they gonna go? when the hurricane come knocking on the door. You're live with Kai on WCAY early morning. One year later, this FNM government is not ready to govern. The worst government, worst prime minister in the history of the Commonwealth. And Darren Henfield has surpassed Renato Curry by leaps and bounds as being one of the worst or the worst member of parliament in the history of North Abaco. It doesn't take much to surpass him, Kai Kiss.